Um, hi, I'm Ralph Grismala. Uh, as, uh, as was said, I'm with ICF. Um, I worked on a uh, white paper of a um, comparing the environmental effects of different foundation types for BOEM a few years ago, uh, which was published as uh, an offshore uh, study. And a lot of what I'm going to say is taken from that paper. And the, um, I'll, I'll give you a link to that at the end of this, of this talk so that you can follow up with more details if you're so inclined. Uh, it's gonna be a summary of the existing foundation types, installation methods and effects. Um, and it's gonna be you know, pretty basic. Uh, and I think most of you are probably familiar with it, with the basic types. As you can see, and this, this is a, an illustration I actually stole from NREL uh, that has been published in a number of papers. And it shows you know, the, you know, some of the basic types going from a monopile on the left through jackets, uh, various tripod types into floating foundations over on the right. Uh, let's see. And now my screen, there we go. Um, so the first we're gonna talk about monopile foundations, which is, you know, far and away the uh, most prevalent type of foundation for offshore wind currently in use. I think well over 90% of uh, existing offshore wind foundations or monopiles. And that's the, you know, the current standard almost everywhere for new installations with very limited exceptions. Uh, the monopile is essentially a single large diameter steel pipe driven into the seabed. One of the things that's impressive about these, if you're not uh, familiar with the technology is that the diameters are getting very large. They're um, on the order of 10 meters in diameter. I think I've seen a few that are about 10% bigger than that now that they're in the design stage. And although most installations are in waters up to, or current designs are for waters in the range of, you know, perhaps 120 feet or so in that range. Um, there's talk of extending the technology into waters up to 200 feet. So this technology may be around for a while. The installation is usually accomplished with pile driving hammers. Um, so it's, you know, massive blows, very large equipment, uh, generates a um, pretty dynamic, you know, sound and pressure wave, which is one of the reasons we're all here. Uh, but they can also be installed with vibratory methods, uh, um, which surprisingly do not seem to have a, a current limit for uh, how large of a pile they can install. Uh, the uh, vibratory methods have a number of uh, vibratory motors or vibratory impact hammers uh, attached to the top of the pile, and you can add those, um, you know, pretty much to the limit you need to drive the piles. And I've heard of some installations in Hong Kong that uh, are driving piles on the same scale of these, uh, you know, 10 meter diameter piles or larger. Uh, and in more difficult ground conditions, they can also be drilled or pre-drilled. Um, but uh, that's much more expensive and it uh, roughly doubles the cost of insulation of the pile. So it's not very common unless you absolutely have to use that technology. In terms of acoustic effects, you know, as I said, the hammering generates a pretty dynamic uh, sound wave, pressure wave that can cause harm to marine, uh, marine mammals in particular. Um, it can damage fish, it can actually cause death, per cause permanent hearing loss. But in addition to the physical injuries, there are also a lot of behavioral effects where the uh, marine creatures will avoid the area, uh, can mask predatory behaviors and things like that. So there are um, aspects of the uh, acoustic environment that are less, perhaps less serious than uh, direct physical injury, but uh, probably more widespread. And as you would expect, pile driving creates the uh, the largest effects in uh, vibratory insulation and drilling would be uh, much smaller. Uh, the, the next uh, most common foundation type to date is uh, jacket foundations. And these are uh, similar to what you would see in the oil and gas industry. These are lattice uh, truss structures, uh, typically you know, four-legged, but they can, uh, you know, be four, six, eight, depending on the size of the structures. Um, generally with uh, tubular pile legs, horizontal cross brazing and diagonal struts. The uh, jackets are anchored to the seabed with piles, typically in one of two ways. Either the piles can be driven in advance of placement of the jacket uh, by use of a template uh, that carefully aligns the piles, and then the jacket is uh, set on the piles and grounded in place, 
or uh, the more common method is probably um, actually driving the piles through the hollow legs of the tower, um, which guarantees your alignment, and then they're grouted in place at the end of installation. The acoustic effects of driving the piles for a jacket foundation are similar in type to those of driving monopiles, uh, but because the piles are much smaller, uh, the, the effects are, are much lower um, because the energy required is much, much less. They give you an idea of scale. The uh, you know, the monopile might have a diameter of 30, 33 feet, something like that currently, whereas the leg of a jacket foundation might be, uh, you know, three meters in diameter. Um, another uh, foundation which has not had wide acceptance yet, but there have been a few um, installations of these, at least pilot testing, it's uh, tripod foundations, and there are uh, a number of variations on the tripods. This particular one uses a uh, tetrahedral uh, space frame that connects the foundation piles to the central tower. And then the central tower um, from that point upward is very similar to the tower for a, uh, or to the um, you know, support foundation for a monopile. Um, the the, the uh, tripod can be anchored with, um, you know, driven piles, but occasionally it can be um, it, it can be anchored with suction caissons at the corners of the triangular base. Uh, the acoustic effects for driving the piles would be similar to those of uh, used in a, a jacket structure, uh, and the acoustic effects for a suction caisson would be much less because there's no there's no hammering involved. Uh, the a suction caisson is a relatively quiet insulation. Um, and we'll get into how that works a little bit later. Uh, this is a variation, again, another three-legged foundation. Uh, this is uh, called a tripod foundation, it has three cylindrical pile legs that connect to the transition piece above the water line. The distinction with this one compared to the uh, prior tripod is that the legs, the, the piles for the legs are significantly larger in diameter because they're not just anchoring it into the, the seabed, they're also providing the uh, you know, vertical and horizontal support for the uh, transition piece in the tower itself. So these piles would be small, although smaller than a monopile, considerably larger than the piles you would find uh, in the tripod or in the jacket foundation. And therefore, the acoustic effects of uh, driving the piles would be somewhere in between. Uh, they can also be, um, let's see, and actually, I think that's an error on the slide. I don't think I've ever seen these with suction case on, so we're just going to skip over that one, call it user error. Let's see. Uh, a jack-up foundation is another type of uh, you know, tripod foundation doesn't necessarily have to be a tripod, but that's the uh, most common configuration under development now. Uh, the jacket foundations are actually floatable, and they, you can float the entire platform into place and then lower the legs to the seabed. The seabeds penetrate into the, or the legs penetrate into the seabed uh, until they, they meet resistance, and then the platform itself is jacked up to its operating height and locked in place. This is very similar to a, to a lift boat or a jack-up boat that's often used for installation of um, offshore structures, whether it's oil and gas or wind. Uh, and this technology grew out of the oil and gas industry. Uh, these foundations have minimal acoustic effects uh, because there is no hammering. Um, it's it's uh, you know pretty much just floating boat into place and, and uh, you know standing it up on the seabed and jacking it up. Uh, the next type of foundation is a suction bucket foundation. These are also uh, sometimes called monopods. Uh, in a simple, and it's, it's basically a it's. It, in terms of technology, it's very similar to a suction caisson. Uh, it's basically an open uh, cylinder uh, on the bottom with a closed top. It's uh, lowered to the seabed through controlled flooding and, and some um, you know guide cables to uh, position it carefully. Uh, once it sits on the seabed, it, the cutting edge 
of the bucket penetrates the seabed under its own weight at a certain distance, and then subsea pumps pump water out of the bucket uh, to create a pressure differential and the weight of the tower and the, and the differential and the hydraulic pressures force the bucket deeper into the seabed uh, till it's the, until it reaches its design depth. Uh, compared to installation with piles, you know, whether it's monopiles or driving uh, smaller piles for jacket and, you know, tripod foundations, the noise for a suction bucket foundation is considerably lower, uh, again, because there's no hammering involved at all, and it's just a, you know, simple, you know, pumping operation. Uh, the next uh, foundation you have to run across is the gravity foundation, also known as gravity-based structures. And these are just what they sound like. They're large, heavy structures with wide bases that simply sit on the seafloor, and the base is heavy enough that it can withstand the, uh, you know, the vertical loads and the overturning moments from the wind tower. Um, they're most commonly made of reinforced concrete, but there are some steel designs out there. Uh, one of the interesting things about the gravity foundations, especially the concrete ones, is that uh, they can be produced, in theory anyway, in, in areas that don't have a, a supply chain to produce monopiles. So there was a, uh, an offshore uh, uh, you know, wind farm proposal uh, that for the state of New York or you know, in New York waters, and they were leaning towards gravity foundations. And I think actually awarded the uh, contract for a gravity proposal. At least that was one of the options on the table uh, because of the supply chain issues. Um, and I think they eventually decided to go with monopiles for a, a number of economic reasons. Um, for the gravity foundations, one thing that's different compared to some of the uh, other types of foundations is that it requires more seabed preparation, and it, this can include a significant amount of dredging at the bottom to reach a design depth for the gravity foundation um, and uh, building up a uh, level gravel pad on which to seat the foundation. Uh, this has lower acoustic effects than, than pile driving, but the dredging operation um, it can take significantly more time. And they give um, they give you some idea of, of the scale of the time when installing monopiles, even the very large monopiles, they can set individual piles in, in a matter of hours. It's, it's really incredible to watch some of the time-lapse video of the uh, wind turbine installation vessels moving from site to site. And you know, when they get in production mode, they can go very, very quickly. Uh, whereas obviously a dredging operation is going to be more time intensive just for the amount of material that has to be moved. Now I did see on the uh, some of the pre-workshop materials uh, just in the last few days that this is supposed to focus on fixed foundations, but I'm going to mention floating foundations uh, very quickly. Uh, and there are several different types and the the, the key thing in terms of noise would be the anchors, and some can be piled, uh, some can be deadweight anchors, drag anchors, and embedded anchors, and they can also use suction caissons. And as we get into the, the Pacific coast, you know, off the uh, west coast of the U.S. and Hawaii, floating foundations are apt to be uh, the foundation of choice uh, because the water depth exceeds anything that a fixed foundation will be able to do. Uh, this is just another variation, it's called a spar, which is just a single ballasted cylinder. And uh, the tension leg platform, which is anchored, and the, um, the legs are actually, rather than being catenary cables, are actually tension legs. Uh, the piles on the, on the tension leg platform, or the foundations, uh, tend to be uh, piles or suction caissons because they have to have more holding power than drag anchors and other types of um, anchors are currently able to uh, provide. Uh, this is the paper I referred to at the beginning of the presentation. So if anybody wants to follow up on that, uh, the link is there. And if I've done this right, the QR code uh, should actually work. And that's, and that's your run through. Excellent. Thanks so much, Ralph. Uh, that was a really 
wonderful overview of uh, foundation types. And thanks for reminding everyone of your report if folks haven't seen it yet. Um, definitely appreciating all the comments and questions in the chat. And I think a lot of this we'll be able to respond to um, as soon as we get to the mural board discussions in, in a little bit as well. So um, I would like to next go ahead and introduce our uh, next speaker, Monica, Monica Marr, uh, who holds a PE. Uh, she is the offshore wind specialist with GDIT in support of US DOE WIDO. She will be presenting to us today on Now RDC, the National Offshore Wind R&D Consortium, and some of the research projects that are being done through the consortium related to alternative foundations and installation methods. So with that, Monica, I'll welcome you to share your screen and provide any other introductory remarks on your background. Thank you. All right, thank you. And I'll just do a quick hello, but my, my camera is a bit wonky. Um, got it there. Okay, so um, I'll be, um, as Rebecca said, sharing um, kind of some research projects that are in the, the NAR DC and the, the WIDO portfolios. Um, and this will kind of build off some of the technology that we just um, heard Ralph speak about. Uh, so, so one project um, that's an NAR DC funded project by Texas A&M. Uh, is considering a steel monobucket foundation. Um, so designing for a 15 megawatt turbine uh, support structure in, in US waters. Um, this project compares vibratory and suction bucket for foundation installation. Um, and it found that vibratory and suction are both viable and clean sand. Um, and suction installation is best in uniform clay where, where vibratory uh, is not well suited. And in the case of heterogeneous soil profiles, it'll require specific evaluation. Um, so vibratory is tends to be more likely to be possible than suction. Uh, this project also looked at a uh, wet toe transport concept, um, which they found could be most adv advantageous for suction installation. So trying to avoid the need of using a, a WTIV. And for that, the, the foundation is made buoyant using rat buoys towed into place and then set down in a controlled manner. Uh, they also looked at a barge transport concept that was, so that was developed that could be compatible with both vibratory and suction installation, um, though a large offshore crane would be needed for installing from a, a barge. And for vibratory installation, a heavy lift vessel is needed at site to to lift and operate the large hammers that are that are used. So, um, so all of these technologies are going to avoid the impact hammering noise of monopiles. Um, though, of course, a, a vibratory installation would have the vibratory hammer noise, which is um, not as loud, but uh, is still somewhat loud. So, uh, next concept to look at. Um, this project by Deme Offshore um, is also a now RDC funded project. Their trisection pile caisson foundation concept uh, it uses simple components like a monopile. So it has three suction piles. Um, so each bucket would be smaller as compared to a, a mono bucket. And the, the plumbness of the structure can be well controlled during installation um, by you know, adjusting the rate of each of the three buckets. Um, and then the, the base that is the interface uh, between the, the suction piles and the column, that could be steel or it could be concrete for increased local content. Um, and then the, the base and the tower both offer opportunity for nature inclusive design elements. And the central column support of the tower um, would be a simpler, less expensive fabrication as compared to a jacket structure, um, which is more common today. Uh, 
So another um, now recently funded project um, that has actually concluded uh, is by RKM. Um, so their low cost module concrete support structure and heavy lift vessel alternative um, concept was advanced to a TRL of three under that under the now RDC project. Um, so it can, included concept design, cost estimate, technical feasibility, uh, assessment of the, the modular concrete support structure. Um, and it looked at both modular concrete and then also considered um, 3D concrete printing of, of some components. Uh, and in that study, they compared a conventional monopile to a concrete base that, that could be installed with two different installation methods. Um, so both installing the base with tugs followed by a WTIV that would set the turbine and then also looking at setting the turbine key side and then wet towing the assembled unit out so without using a WTIV. Um, and the overall CapEx and LCOE were similar across all three options. So certain risks um, are alleviated by avoiding the use of monopiles or WTIVs. And so, and other advantages uh, can include local content or a reduced manufacturing footprint. So like as compared to a, a monopile factory um, and then ability to scale up. So both scaling up for larger turbines and scaling up the structure for deeper water um, can, be, can be easier with a, a concrete structure as compared to a monopile. And for this project, they, they uh, considered a few different uh, anchor solutions so suction pile, driven pile, or gravity base, um, all of which would avoid the, the extreme hammering noise of, of a monopile impact hammer. Um, and in the project, they also assessed sites for manufacturing, marshalling, assembling, and launching the structures um, for, for a US case. Uh, so another uh, now RDC funded project by Esteco, um, their self-installing concrete gravity base substructure. So they advanced their design and evaluated the, the gravity base structure concept for US conditions. Um, for their concept, the turbine can be set key side and then wet towed with the support of a reusable transportation and installation module. Uh, so that braces the structure during the tow. And for extra large turbines with very high hub heights, um, a telescoping tower technology could be incorporated. Um, so that would allow for keyside turbine installation, even um, for, for very tall hub heights where normally a land-based crane couldn't reach. So deploying a gravity-based structure um, can require a lot more seabed preparation as compared to a monopile. Um, but using the concrete structure has um, kind of similar advantages as mentioned um, for RCAM that there could be local content ability to scale up um, and kind of a, a reduced manufacturing footprint. And uh, Tufts University is is working on a project that's funded by the DOE's wind office. So this looks at the effect of fatigue on the capacity and performance of structural concrete. So wind support structures experience incredible fatigue loads and the effect of fatigue on concrete is not understood well enough. It's not understood as well as for steel. So they're doing an experimental study uh, to quantify the effect of concrete on the strength, stiffness, and durability of concrete. Um, so they're gathering existing data and then as well as generating new data with experiments um, and then using this data to advance models and standards. And some of the current fatigue models are too conservative for cost-effective designs. And, and overall the current fatigue models of concrete um, just aren't refined enough to, to evaluate very specific structure designs. Um, so generally any concrete structure, um, you know, is not going to have that impact hammering that uh, monopiles have. So um, 
less noise there. And then other, other advantages of concrete structures um, can include a, a long lifespan, um, great dur dur durability, local concrete, and um, potential for nature inclusive design. And I think that's all for me. So thank you.